Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another online lecture for organic chemistry. This lecture is part of the alkene organic synthesis series, so we're going to be continuing on uh, examining different reactions that alkenes are subjected to and the products that they produce. And up today is the hydration of alkenes. Now, there's three different methods for hydration of alkenes. They are each going to receive their own video. Uh, and the first one here is probably the simplest of the three, which is the hydration of an alkene. And by the way, hydration is the addition of an alcohol group. You're really adding water total, uh, but you're going to obtain an alcohol functional group from that. Uh, but the simplest is the acidic addition um, of water to an alkene through really just using a strong acid in water. Um, now, I do want to mention, uh, when we take a look at this reaction, we've seen this somewhat before when we have been dealing with dehydration. So this is somewhat of a reversible reaction. Uh, you have to consider how much heat you're adding when you go back and forth with this. But we're going to look at it uh, going from an alkene over to an alcohol. Now, this is a pretty simple one. So we start off with our alkene. We have some sort of an acid along with water, which we will represent as H3O+. So it could be HCl, H2SO4, um, any of the strong acids that will completely ionize to give you H3O+. And then when you have the acid and the water present, the alkene will react, uh, taking that acidic proton, and then the alcohol comes in and attacks the carbocation that forms. So you end up with your alcohol in a Markovnikov addition. We always observe Markovnikov addition when we go through this particular process. And we will learn one later that's an anti-Markovnikov that will be coming up with the third hydration video. But right now, this is a Markovnikov addition. So let's take a look at this mechanism. If we look at the mechanism for hydration of an alkene, again, we have this acidic molecule here. The alkene is going to reach out and grab one of the acidic protons, the electrons from that acidic hydrogen, its bond to the oxygen will go back to the oxygen forming water. And what we end up with is a carbocation intermediate, sort of like when we would add HBr or HCl. We have this trigonal planar flat carbocation intermediate. And if you remember, when we have a trigonal planar carbocation, we can have attack from the top or the bottom. So you could really get a mixture of the two OHs, some attacking from the top and then some from the bottom uh, when you're doing this. So as we proceed forward with this carbocation, the H2O is going to come in and attack. And again, sort of like with the halohydrin formation, we see that the H2O brings this proton uh, with it. So it's H2O bound up to the alkene or what's now an alkane molecule and the oxygen has a plus charge. So we're going to need another water molecule to come back and grab the extra proton hanging out here. Those electrons between that proton and oxygen are going to go back to the oxygen, and now we have the alcohol formation. So this last step here is important. A lot of students tend to forget, and they just slap on an OH when the water attacks. That water comes in as water. You have to create the OH by removing that acidic proton. And what you'll notice here is that we get H3O plus back and H3O plus is what we started with. So the term that we use when we have something that is not consumed in a reaction is a catalyst. And so this is a acidic catalyst with water that is producing the hydration for this alkene. Um, and so this is really it. This is the mechanism. The biggest thing you want to remember with this, and you can go back to find more detail in some of the other videos, especially the uh, HBr, HCl videos when you're adding that halogen, uh, is that we need to observe Markovnikov addition. So remember that the more stable carbocation is going to form here. So if I look at a secondary versus a tertiary carbocation, the, second, uh, the secondary is going to be the less stable of the two. And so the stablest one is the tertiary. I'm going to go for that and send the water in after that one. And so the water ends up in the more substituted position simply because that's where the carbocation could exist in the first place. And that's where the resulting alcohol ends up. Uh, so hopefully this made sense and was simple enough. That's really it in terms of the mechanism for this one. It's not too bad. The other two are a little bit more complicated. So what I will do is I will put up a couple of practice problems as always. So here are the practice problems. 
and go ahead and pause the video and give this a shot. Okay, welcome back. I'm going to post the answers up here. So here are the alcohols that result from these alkenes. And just keep in mind that when you're doing this, you should always observe the Markovnikov addition. So if you have two equal places for carbocation building up, in other words, two positions that are both secondary, it's not going to matter as much. But if you have a secondary versus a tertiary, secondary versus a primary, et cetera, you are going to have to make sure that the alcohol is landing up in the more stable position because that's where the carbocation is going to attract that water molecule. So hopefully you guys are okay with this. Um, if you have any questions, you're welcome to leave a comment. And other than that, please remember to like, comment, and subscribe for new videos uh, and also to keep in touch with me. Um, and I will see you guys for the next video, which is going to be the second hydration process, uh, oxymercuration. Thanks a lot, guys.